What's up everybody, Randy here, uh, sitting in my house in Nashville, and uh, just wanted to say happy anniversary to everybody. Uh, today's the 10 year anniversary of Until We Have Faces, and uh, we hope you guys are doing well. I know it's been a tough year for everybody out there with the uh, pandemic and uh, all the uh, craziness of 2020, and uh, hopefully we're getting out of it soon and uh, getting back to, to normal. But I just wanted to uh, drop in real quick and uh, say thanks again for your guys' amazing support and uh, take a quick trip down memory lane with you guys uh, with uh, Until We Faces. So that was an incredible record cycle. Uh, we had done our highest uh, debut sales ever. Uh, we reached number two on the top 200 Billboard albums, and uh, we did Conan and Leno in the span of a week, and uh, we did our first international tour, and it was an incredible time. It was a huge launch pad, and uh, we uh, we look back on it now and just can't um, believe all the things that, that happened because as a result of that album, but we uh, that was the last time we worked on a full record with, with Jason Rao, and uh, Joe was in the band, and uh, would later find out during that cycle that he wanted to move on. Um, and uh, still a great buddy, still doing well. And uh, yeah, so we shot a couple of music videos for that album. And as you know, we did uh, Feeding Machine, Lie to Me. And uh, real quick uh, trip down memory lane with that. Uh, we did a behind the scenes video that you guys probably saw on YouTube, but you don't know some of the things I'm about to tell you. Uh, we had a two day shoot. First day we shot Lie to Me at the Sloss Burners, and then that night we shot all the inside videos uh, of the opening scenes of Feed the Machine. And uh, Anthony had cut weight down to 170 pounds so that he could do the entire video with his shirt off. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> um, but uh, the next day we planned to do the Feed the Machine outside shots and uh, some of the machine shots. And we went to this, uh, this stair tread factory just down the street from Sloss Furnace. And uh, they, they do all the stair treads and everything, the metal stair treads or steel stair treads, I guess, for the New York City subway system. So if you're in New York and you're looking down at your feet while you're walking up the stairs, that's the place. Um, but yeah, so got there about, I don't know, Four o'clock in the afternoon, we did a casting call and uh, had a couple hundred Red fans show up eager to be a part of the video and we wanted to get everybody in the video. Um, the fire department was there, of course, the ambulance service, all that. And about an hour after we got there, uh, some, some black SUVs and some cop cars pulled in and uh, it was members of the state legislature and the state police department. And they wanted to know if we had the paperwork for the CO2 and the nitrogen and the propane tanks and everything that we trucked across state lines to shoot the video. Um, the paperwork we had, uh, but it was, I guess, the wrong paperwork for whatever reason. But uh, long story short, for the next two or three hours, it was a debate slash argument. They wanted to shut the video down. Uh, we were very, very nervous and upset that we were going to um, have to tell our fans they had to leave and uh, we weren't going to be able to shoot the video. But... We ended up paying a $2,000 fine on the spot to let the cameras roll. And after we did that, the cops completely changed their tone. They were uh, asking for pictures and signatures and things like that. And it was kind of annoying at the time. Uh, but now that we look back on it, uh, kind of crazy and funny. But um, we shot all the outside shots at midnight. We were about four hours behind schedule. Got, got shooting at midnight, blasting this loud music, and there were some explosions and stuff. We had five-gallon gas mortars going off, and if you guys have ever been around five gallons of gas, it explodes. It shakes the ground, and it makes one heck of a intimidating noise, but um, that was fun. Got inside about two o'clock and started shooting all the inside shots with the, the, uh, the machine that the uh, production company had made for us and uh, all the extras and that was a lot of fun, did some fighting and, and uh, some some uh, some more blowing stuff up, but we were loading out and we didn't know at the time while we were shooting all the inside shots, the National Weather Service had issued a tornado warning for the county that we were in in Alabama. And so we didn't know anything about it, but when we got outside, um, 
we were loading trucks, the lightning and the wind and the thunder started picking up and uh, we learned that, you know, there was a, a warning out. So we're from Tennessee, we didn't think much about it, but we got in the cars and started heading home and we got stuck right in the middle of the storm. Um, Joe, I was riding with Joe and uh, he never, never slowed down. <laughs> we drove right through that sucker. We, could, we couldn't see anything. Um, got home and found out that uh, just uh, a couple hours after we'd left, a tornado had blown through that county and devastated it. And uh, we were just there to shoot a music video. Um, so nobody got hurt. We were really glad that uh, a number of fans were stuck in it, the madness. But um, it was an amazing, it was an amazing two days. And uh, we shot the video with the Irwin brothers. They have done a couple of movies you guys might have seen lately. Uh, they did the one uh, about Bart Mallard called I Can Only Imagine. And then they did uh, Woodlawn and a couple others. But if you guys haven't seen those, check them out. It was, I think probably, Feeding Machine was probably the last video that they ever did before they moved to doing movies. But uh, yeah, man, it was such an incredible time and, and uh, such an incredible album cycle. And um, you guys have always been there for us and uh, support us coming to shows and support us to raise the money to make declaration and we cannot be more grateful. Uh, I know a lot of bands and the whole music industry in general is struggling pretty hard right now. A lot of bands won't make it back to the stage uh, just because of financial distress and we're praying that we're not one of those bands. Um, but we've been off the road for 10, 11 months now. We've been off the road for 11 months now. And uh, if you'd have told me back in March of 2020 that we were um, gonna be off the road for a year. We were we were in Louisville, Kentucky, loaded into a show and uh, got a phone call from the governor's office saying shut it down. So we headed home. We were supposed to be in Chicago the next day, and uh, we figured, well, if we have to be in Chicago, we'll leave we'll leave late tonight and get up there. But um, halfway into the drive, we got a call that the entire weekend of shows would be canceled, and, and 48 hours later, the entire world was shut down. So uh, it was a crazy crazy thing and, and um, you know we certainly hope that the pandemic hasn't affected you guys as much as it's affected um, so many people and and uh, you know we're just praying that uh, this thing gets over sooner than later and um, and that we can get back to business as usual but we uh, we certainly have missed you guys um, it has been a struggle We've gone through some you know depressive times uh, just not being able to to tour um, we've tried to fill the time with our families. Uh, we haven't had that opportunity in 15 years. Uh, this will be actually year 16 for Red on the Road, and um, a lot of bands don't make it that that long, and the ones that do um, go through, you know, a lot of things that a lot of people don't, that uh, a lot of people don't, that don't know or won't ever know about. Uh, but I just wanted to share some of the, the uh, cool stories that happened during Until We Have Faces, and, uh, Maybe I'll get uh, get back on here and talk to you guys about our experience at Conan and Leno. Uh, that was that was pretty awesome too. But we hope you guys are doing well. We love you guys so much, and uh, happy anniversary.